Good morning, St. Paul family. This is the day the Lord has risen. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am Melvin Scales, and on behalf of the entire St. Paul congregation, we thank you for worshiping with us on this Easter Sunday. Whether you are with us every Sunday or if this is your first time joining us, we are so very glad that you've chosen to be here today. Let us bow our head in prayer. Our Father God in heaven, today we remember the veil of darkness transforming to the brightest light, the most dreadful end becoming the most beautiful beginning. We remember with trembling hearts the depth of despair fading to reveal hope everlasting. The curse of death is forever defeated by eternal life. Heavenly Father, we remember with thankfulness your willingness to sacrifice your only son, Jesus, for our sin. We pray this morning with abounding joy for his resurrection. For he is the resurrection. He is the truth. And he is the life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the promise of heaven and your generous invitation of eternal life for all. We pray to you this morning in the most precious name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and Redeemer. Amen and amen. It is now time to praise God through the ministry of music, which reflects the beliefs of St. Paul United Methodist Church. Let's listen together. again, St. Paul. It's time now for hospitality moments and sharing with you some upcoming events that it's important for you to know about. 
Registration for COVID-19 vaccines begin this Monday, April the 5th, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. through Friday, April 9th, again, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Registration resumes on Monday, April the 12th through Thursday, the April 15th. Please get your shot and encourage others to do the same. Contact the Health and Wellness Ministry if you have any questions or if you can volunteer. Women's Weekend is this Saturday, April the 25th, and virtual workshop is on Sunday, April the 25th. The website and the online bulletin have all the details. Dr. Malika Roman Isler will be our speaker. Our 150th church anniversary is Sunday, May 16th, just right around the corner. United Methodist Bishop Julius C. Trimble will be our preacher for that day. This year's celebration will, of course, be virtual. Thank you for giving your offerings for the anniversary and the purposes your giving supports. Not only does our giving support the anniversary expenses, our giving will support scholarships for our graduating students and building and grounds, and also all infrastructure needs. Adults are asked to give $150, while high school and college students are asked to give us $15, and the children and those who are in middle school, $1.50 each. So thank you for your, your giving to our anniversary event. It's offering time at St. Paul, and we know that God loves a cheerful giver. Let's keep this scripture in heart and mind as we give today. With our tithes and our offerings, we give back to God some of what he has already given to us, and let's not forget our mission work, which meets the needs of our community. We do have four ways that you may give each week. You may mail your gift to the church. That's the old fashioned way and a lot of us prefer that. Or you may set up a bank draft. You can also do it by the Give Plus app, which is available on both the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. And of course, you may give by visiting our website. Thank you for your continued giving. It is because of you that we are able to do the work this church does while blessing others as God blesses us. Let us bow our head in prayer as we pray to God for the offerings that we have provided. Holy God of mercy, redemption, and grace. This morning, we bring our gifts and pray to you that you will dedicate them to your work of love and reconnection with all your children. These gifts seem small when balanced against what Christ has given us and what you continue to give to us through the Holy Spirit. In our giving, may we grow in gratitude, may we grow in trust, and may we grow in faithfulness. We pray this in the name of Christ, who gave all for us. Amen. Well, it's prayer time, church family. Uh, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. And God's peace will guard our hearts and minds as we live in Christ Jesus. On this Easter Sunday morning, on this Resurrection Sunday, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, who is our risen Lord, to give you thanks and praise for the blessing of another day. We ask now that you would watch over us in all that we do. We thank you for this time of worship 
and that you will labor with us, be with us as we worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray for all that duty uh, assigns our hearts to pray for. We pray for those who are leading us in government. We pray for those who are watching over us. We ask your blessing now as there has been another tragedy of, in, uh, the, in Washington, D.C. We pray for the family of the Capitol Police officer who lost his life. And we pray for the one who, who was the one who took the, his life. And we pray for his family, give him strength for the living of these days. We ask that you would keep us in perfect peace as we keep our minds stayed on you. Uh, bless our nation, bless our churches, uh, help us to be Easter people, that we would live in the truth of the resurrection. Hear now our prayers. Now, be with those who need the, uh, a special blessing, those who are sick, who need healing, those who are out of work, who need employment, those whose uh, finances do not uh, meet, they need additional financial support. So I'm asking you to be with them and bless them. Uh, bless our efforts uh, to offer Jesus to others. May the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, may that message uh, take hold in somebody's heart today. Now grant to us this day your strength, your peace, and your power. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Our dance units, our worship dance units now will lead us in worship.
It is preaching time. It is preaching time on this Resurrection Sunday, on this Easter Sunday. I point your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I'll read, uh, I'll, we'll only read one verse together, but then we will go through selected verses as we talk about the Easter message that is given by the Apostle Paul here in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 20. One verse, please stand with me for the reading of that verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. But now Christ is risen. Please be seated. Let's talk about just for a few moments on this Easter Sunday morning, victory, victory. Your and my salvation and the salvation of everyone uh, was in jeopardy here, were in jeopardy here. All of our salvations were in jeopardy here. People were attacking the truth of the resurrection. And in verses 12 and 13 of 1 Corinthians 15, Paul says, Now if Christ is preached that, ha that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection from the dead, then Christ is not risen. There's a problem. There's the problem. There's the problem. Some were teaching that in general, the, je the dead do not rise. Therefore, the logic would be, if the dead do not rise and there is no resurrection, then Jesus did not rise. And again, in the text, in verses 4 through 7, Paul says that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He rose according to the scriptures. And that he was seen by Peter, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at one time, of whom many of them are still alive, the greater part are still alive, but some have died, some have fallen asleep. And after that, he was seen by James, then by all the apostles. Also in Corinth, Paul says in verse 12, now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how can some of you, how do some of you among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? The Corinthians believers were being taught that the dead do not rise. The Sadducees was a religious group that did not believe in resurrected bodies. So maybe some of them had taught that, G, that the there is no resurrection, th therefore Jesus did not ri rise from the dead. The believers in Corinth, like all of us, uh, came out of the world. And in that world were teachings that were not biblical. Teachings that they needed to let go of. Teachers that they needed to let go of as well. And all of us have come out of the world. All of us have come out of teachings that were not biblical. And it's challenging and it's hard for us to let go of what we have been living with in the world. Things that we have counted as sacred, which were not. So Paul says, you got to get rid of all that teaching. And in verse 33, Paul goes further to say, avoid bad teachers. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Evil company corrupts good habits. So he says, don't hang out and don't submit yourselves to these bad teaching. And it was particularly important about the resurrection because there is the resurrection is essential to our faith. It's essential to our salvation. It's essential to God. It's essential to Paul. And so much so that Paul addressed the situation head on. Now, following teachers that do not accept the gospel message, he, he says in verse, he, he says, never follow, never follow teachers that do not accept the gospel message that's seen in verses three and four. Here is the gospel. For I deliver to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried 
and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. To deny the resurrection would rob believers of the victory over death, the grave, and hell. Easter is important because Easter means victory. Let's look and see what e the Easter victory is for us and for others. First of all, Easter is victory for Jesus. In verse 20, but now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Jesus predicted often that he would die and on the third day be raised from the grave. And Jesus did just what he said he would. It wasn't a trick and it wasn't false. Verses three through seven, that he was buried and that he rose again from the dead according to the scriptures and that he was seen by Cephas, then by 12. Then after that, he was seen by over 500 at one time. Many of them at that time were still alive, but some of them had died. And then he was seen by James, then by all the apostles. Look at all the witnesses that Jesus rose from the dead. There's Peter, there's the 12, there's the 500, there's the apostles. But then there are others. There are other passages. There are the women. There are the two who were on the road to Emmaus. There were the apostles when he came in and ate fish with them. He came through a door. The res <coughs> resurrection is true. And he said he would rise and he did. And that's victory. His enemy said that he would not, but he did. His enemies would put out, put out false report, would put out false report that the disciples stole his body, but not so. He is alive. He was alive. He, he, he appeared to others as alive, as he was alive. That's victory. And since Jesus rose from the dead, rose from the dead as he said he would, you and I can believe Jesus. Well, Easter is victory for the word. For I deliver to you, first of all, that, that which I also received, that Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The scriptures taught the resurrection. The scriptures said that he would die. And Jesus said himself in Luke 24, verses 46 and 47, he said to them, thus it is written, thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins be preached and proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. The scripture said that he would be buried. The scripture said that he would die. The scripture said that he would be buried. But the scripture said that he would be raised again. The resurrection is victory for the word. The scriptures are true. You can believe the scriptures. You can trust the scriptures. You can stake your life on the scriptures. You can put your future in the hands of the scripture. The resurrection is another proof that Jesus, the scriptures are, is another proof that Jesus rose from the dead and he rose according to the scriptures. So Easter is victory for the word. Easter is victory for hope. These are marvelous words here in verses 12 through 20. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, listen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we as preachers and teachers are found false wit are found to be false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Jesus Christ, whom he did not raise up if in fact there is the, the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You're, you are still in your sins. Then all those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we of all men are the most, are most pitiable. The hope of the gospel is that Christ died 
and was buried and rose. If then there was no resurrection, then Christ is still dead. So we have no hope. If Christ, if there is no resurrection, then preaching is a waste of time. So we have no hope. If Christ, if there is no resur resurrection, preachers are liars because they preach something that is not true. So we have no hope. If Christ, if there was no resurrection, faith is a waste of time. So we have no hope. If, Christ, if there was no resurrection, sins are not forgiven. So we have no hope. Verse 18, our loved ones who died are simply dead in the grave. So we have no hope. This, if there were no resurrection, then this life is all there is. So we have no hope. But thanks be to God, Jesus is alive. Jesus is risen from the dead. He is alive. So our sins are forgiven. Our faith is worthwhile. Our loved ones are in heaven alive. There is more to come after we die. There, these are our hope. And we have hope because of Jesus' resurrection. Sorry, Jesse Jackson. But a long time ago, when Jesus rose from the dead, Jesus kept hope alive. Sorry, President Obama, but when Jesus rose from the dead, Jesus gave us the audacity of hope. Easter is victory for hope. Easter is victory for life. Verses 20 through 22 and then 54 and 55. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all shall be made alive. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be, be brought to pass the saying, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, O Hades, where is your victory? Christ is risen from the dead. Jesus has taken the victory from death. Adam's sin put death on all of us, but Jesus' resurrection takes away death from every believer, and he gives us life. Jesus took victory from death, and we have life because he lives. Easter is victory not for death, but for life. Our loved ones, from the oldest to the youngest who have died in the who have died in faith live now in the presence of God because of Easter that's victory and don't let death keep you from give, li, uh, living life have your loved ones died if they were believers they are with the Lord so live the peop many people were concerned about what kind of body and Paul says, don't worry about what kind of body that the dead have. There's a body for every part of life. If there's a body for this life, then we will have a body for eternal life. The dead who do not rise do not need a body, says Paul. They don't need a body if you don't believe in the resurrection. But there is a body that awaits the resurrected believer. And because he lives... We also shall live. Easter is a victory for life. Easter is victory for grace. Hallelujah. Verse 50, verses 56 and 57. The sting, of death, the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. When Paul says that the sting of death is sin, he means that we ought to die because we have sinned. We cannot keep God's law all the time. We fail, we fall, we sin. But thanks be to God that God through the resurrection of Jesus has delivered us from the bondage of our sin. We deserve death, but he gave us life through the resurrection of Jesus and that's a victory for grace. We deserve to die, 
But we on Easter got grace to live. We deserve eternal separation from God. But on Easter, we will live eternity, eternally with God. And that's grace. That's God's amazing grace. Easter is victory for grace. But finally, Easter is victory for faithfulness. Verse 32, Paul says, If in the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it to me if the dead do not rise? Let us eat, drink, for tomorrow we die. But then he says in verse 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. In verse 32, Paul says he had contended with evil, fighting evil people, contending and fighting for the faith. And so if Jesus, if Jesus was not risen from the dead, then Paul was wasting his time. He might as well eat and drink for tomorrow he and all would die. And that's the end of it. Only this life matters. So don't worry about confronting evil is if there's no resurrection from the dead. It won't matter in the long run. Don't worry about sacrifice if there is no resurrection. It won't matter in the long run. Don't worry about being obedient if there is no resurrection. It won't matter in the long run. In other words, if there is no resurrection, faithfulness does not matter. But he says in verse 58, Jesus is alive. So then live faithfully for God, serve God, suffer for God, because your work is not in vain. It may seem like your work is, is in vain, but, but since Jesus has come from the grave, your work is not in vain. Easter is victory for faithfulness. So Paul fights for the, the truth here in 1 Corinthians 15. The truth of Easter, the truth of the resurrection and brothers and sisters and all of us, since Jesus has won the victory on Easter, he gives us privilege and the opportunity to live as resurrected people to tell others that he lives, to stand on his word, to live in his grace, to not fear death, to, say, to sin no more, to serve him faithfully. Don't give up when a believer, believe, when your believing loved one dies. Don't give up because Easter says if they had faith in Christ, they and you have the victory. So the resurrection is real. The resurrection is victory. And at on Easter, we got the victory. Here's how the hymn writer says it as I close. Lo, in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph or his foes. He arose a victor over the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ arose. And so today death could not hold his prey. Death cannot hold us as well. Because Jesus tore the bars away and he arose. Up from the grave he arose. And hallelujah, Christ arose. On Easter, God gave us through Jesus victory. Let us pray. Help us to live in the victory and be faithful to you. It is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you would like to make a decision for Christ of any kind, we invite you to do that now. You may contact us through our information line, info at stpaulumcws.org, or you may call 336-723-4531. Now receive this music from our virtual mass choir.
Lord thy God.
Well, each first Sunday we observe the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, and it's our pleasure to invite you to do that with us today. If you have bread available and juice available, join me in this celebration of our, our Lord. You'll find the words on your screen uh, at the appropriate time. You'll find the words on the screen, screen, and I'll be as clear as I can about when we are to break the bread and eat the bread and raise the cup and drink the cup. Hear now this invitation. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in God's holy ways. Draw this, draw near with faith, take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Using the words that you see on the screen, would you confess aloud saying, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for, their, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all that with hearty repentance and true faith turn to thee, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. Bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words the scriptures say to all that truly turn to the Lord. Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And he is the expiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Continue in prayer with me. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by the one offering of himself a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his passion, death, and resurrection, may be partakers of the divine nature through him, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Our prayer of humble access will be shown on the screen. Now join me in praying aloud saying, we do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. 
we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. For thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so partake to partake of this sacrament of thy Son, Jesus Christ, that we may walk in newness of life and may grow into his likeness and may evermore dwell in him and he in us. And let us all respond by saying, Amen. If you will take the bread. I always invite us to raise it. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you. May it preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your heart and by, by faith with thanksgiving. If you will take the bread and break it. Now, let's eat together the body of Jesus Christ broken for us. Amen. You have the cup, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you. May it preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Drink in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. The blood of Jesus Christ shed for you. Now together, let's take and drink. Thank you for joining us on this Easter Sunday morning, this Resurrection Sunday. I pray that this worship has been a blessing to you and we thank you for joining us. Let me announce then, our, our worship team has been going full force since we entered this pandemic in March of 2020. It's been over a year. It has been and continues to be our joy to plan, record, and attend to the details of worship so that we and all of us could worship each week. We have been prayed for and supported all along the way. So on behalf of our worship teams, our worship units, our technology team, our communications team, thank you for your prayers and support. Now, next Sunday, we ask your prayerful support as our teams take a Sunday off. Uh, next Sunday, our Western North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church will offer us this blessing of rest. Next Sunday, our, our, we will worship. Our worship will be conference-wide, led by our bishop, Paul Leland, and our eight district superintendents and, and choirs from churches around the conference, including one of our St. Paul virtual choirs. So what I'm inviting you to do next week is to worship online with United Methodist Churches in our conference. Our, however you access our worship each week, that's how you'll access worship next Sunday and join in with churches around the conference to worship the Lord. I'm extremely blessed to serve St. Paul at this time. I'm thankful to God for the blessings of people skills, giving, technology that have allowed us to thrive in this season and offer worship and ministry through this season. And I thank you for all that you have done and continue to ask your prayers. And thank you for your support of worship next week as it will be a little different and we will access worship with our conference and celebrate Jesus Christ next Sunday. If you have any questions, please call me, call the office, send me an email, and I will answer your questions to the best of my ability. Again, Happy Easter. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Be safe and be well. Now behold. Precious Lamb of God He was born into sin That I may live again The precious Lamb of God When I always didn't do right I went left He told me to go Standing right here in the midst of all my
Tea